you connect to these three blessings grace of our Lord Jesus Christ one the love of God two the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you when these three blessings are with you you are met the word of God the word of hope change liberty deliverance upliftment and breakthrough you are about to encounter God as you join Reverend Canon Prince Chukuma into deep revelation of the kingdom. Now the world. He who has the Son of God has life. The altar of prayer. Many times people are confused of what is an altar. Or people know what is an altar. They don't, they don't know all about an altar. Number one, altar is a system of authorization. A system of authorization. You know what is authorization? To authorize somebody to do something. Altar is a system of authorization. You know, you have to understand that there are two realms. There are two realms. The realm of the spirit and the physical realm. And by the order of creation, it is only man that has the capacity to operate in both realms at will. It is only man, you, operate in both realms at will, both in the realm of the spirit and in the realm of physical, at will whenever you wish and that is why you call some people Ojen and Mo now, why altar is an altar of auto, auto, <laughs> a system of authorization is that there is a system God established by his wisdom that spirit world not manifest in the physical world. They can only manifest in the physical world through two means. The spirit world. Through a body. Either that you surrender your body to the spirit. Whether the spirit of God or demons. They can only operate through a body or through an altar. Unless an altar authorizes the spirit world. It cannot flow in the physical realm. Or that they possess your body, which we are going to understand that you are also an altar. So, altar is a system of authorization. Number two, altar is a platform where the realm of the spirit make contact with the physical legally. Anything that is done through an altar is legal. invitation to the spirit through an altar. When the spirit is, is walking, when the spirit is carrying out its activities in the physical realm, the spirit is carrying it legally that an altar invited him. Amen. I've told you for a spirit to function on earth, it needs either a body or an altar. Again, altars are connected to covenant. It's a place where covenants are established. You cannot talk about covenant without an altar. No covenant is valid outside an altar. Praise God. Way back before just immediately after the creation, Adam got some revelation of mysteries and he taught his two sons, Ken and Debel, if you want to invite God in your affairs, there must be an altar and there must be a sacrifice. That is why Ken and Debel practice sacrifice. 
you can't you can't talk about sacrifice without talking about an altar so it was a mystery god taught them long ago praise god now altars can be a physical monument just like we are looking at this place once you come here you see this physical establishment you know that it is an altar once you enter inside here something tells you this place is an altar altar can be a location that is why there are some places you will be passing you say hi nah this place is too dangerous i don't like to be here your mind is telling you there is an altar that has opened a portal a gateway for spirits to move around that vicinity now altar can be people this is the major altar i want to talk about you are a mobile altar do you know many things do you know how to establish a contact to establish an altar many altars we are established unknowingly when you do a thing consistently the easiest way to establish an altar when you are doing a particular thing consistently you are inviting the spiritual realm the spirit that is behind those things the spirit that works those things in the spiritual realm that this thing is being done consistently they are invited you know sometimes maybe a woman out of need out of frustration may have sense for money to solve a particular problem before now she has vowed she will not be having sex with any man spirit is not involved yet before you know what is happening she will have sex again for money she will have sex again for money at the part as the more she's going deep into the act the more she is inviting the spirit behind sexual immorality before you know what is happening, she will not be having sex again just for money. She will be having sex for pleasure. And to stop it becomes wahala. Do you know the reason? A spirit is not involved. An altar has been established in her body. She's a mobile altar. That is why if you want to marry somebody, you can say, ah, the mother is not is not a human being you know, just leave her she must be like her mother you know there are things you can pass through blood maybe hiv through of us maybe diabetes do you pass stealing through blood huh? not somehow no what the mother transferred is spirit not blood you can't go to any lab and they diagnose you stealing. Can any lab see that? So why is it that when a mother is a thief to a thief, they are not following me? Huh? Do you know what happened? The mother has been stealing, 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 stealing until she became an altar. She invited spirits of stealing. Spirits of theft now entered her and possessed her. And you know, anywhere physical and spiritual meet, that is an altar. So because the spirit of stealing has now possessed her, she becomes... The same thing applies. If you decide to be praying... The first day, it may be difficult. Second day, you return to that place of prayer. Third day, you return to that place of prayer. Fourth day, you return to that place. One week, you may be struggling the first week. The second week, you notice that it is becoming easier. As you are doing it consistently, the spirit of prayer and supplication will now be invited. Once you enter that place and pray, heaven will open. You know, when Jacob was, when Abraham, on his journey, he came to a place, he built an altar. 
he built an altar and left. After Abraham, after Isaac, after during the time of Jacob, as Jacob was running away from his brother, he came to that spot. He slept that night. And immediately he slept, he saw heaven. What? Opened. Angels were ascending and descending. Woke up, he said, Kai! This is the gate of heaven. God is here, and I knew not. You know, had it been, Jacob didn't have that experience and record it. We will not know that that altar Abraham established was still working. That's how it, 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 it always happened. There is a point you will pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. You become an altar. Just as the scripture says, your body is now the temple of Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost now lives in you. You become a mobile altar. Unknowingly, somebody may come, you just shake somebody and he gets healing. Have you seen a prayer warrior, a prayer machine? He comes to an occasion. He saw an occult man. He said, hey, sir, how are you? The man refused to shake him. Does it happen? Do you know what is happening? There are two altars. The occult man is a mobile altar. The prayer warrior is a mobile altar. But when two altars jam, naturally, the lesser altar will respect itself. Is why if you are an ordinary man, an awkward man can shake you and transfer wickedness to you. Does it happen? He shakes you and transfer sickness. He shakes you and transfer disease. He shakes you and transfer failure. He's an altar. Altar of prayer. So, you have to understand that you are an altar. If your body is the temple, this place is a temple. Am I correct? Every temple has what? So you are an altar. So we are talking about altar of prayer. Now, one of the systems God created for the authorization of God and angels to respond in human's affair and intervene is the altar of prayer. There are other means through which God can get involved in your affairs. But the major way you can invite God into your affair is through the altar of prayer. Amen. The most accurate spiritual health of anybody is measured by his prayer life. The most accurate, if you want to know how healthy you are, show it by your prayer life. Your prayer life will tell you your weight in the spiritual world. If you don't have a strong prayer life, just know that you are a Christmas goat for these other, other altars. Any wicked altar can get up any time. And finish you. So people like us, we are preserved by the prayer life of my mother. People like me, it was my mother's prayer life that rescued me. Some of us, after so many years, if you have a praying mother or a praying father, you notice that some things are going well for you. It is there altar of prayer it's unfortunate that in this generation we don't have praying mothers and praying fathers again what we have now is pinging mothers and pinging fathers people like us when we are growing eh? hi my mother can pray even up till now up till now she will carry seed as she sits down she's praying She's, she's a praying machine. 
Your words in the spiritual, I've told you there are two realms. Your words in the spiritual realm is determined by your prayer life. Excuse me, prayer is not an option. Prayer is not whether you like praying or not. It's unfortunate that people don't like to pray. Do you know why? Prayer is a sacrifice. Do you know what God regards as praying? Not when you have problem. You, you go for, you, I will do fasting today. To, uh, that one is not praying. Until prayer becomes a lifestyle, you are not a prayer warrior. Until you have a time and a place you pray per day, you are not praying. Until prayer starts taking your time, you are not praying. Hello? The other day, I think last week or last two weeks, I was telling you that I went off Facebook. Normally, what kept me in Facebook for a long time was my media. Because we're using to pay. I noticed at the same time, it's taking more time. I went off. I've told Peter, I'll give them my password so that they will be doing it there. If prayer is not taking your time, if you are praying when you have time, mm -mm, you are not praying. Occult people don't do rituals when they have time, do they? Huh? They do rituals according to stipulation. Muslims don't pray because they have time. That five times a day, whether in the market, at times at the airport, I will meet them whenever it is time. If the flight is delayed, you will see them. They will go to airport toilet, wash their legs, wash their face, come out, spread their mouth. In the airport uh, waiting room, they will be praying there. And they have carved moss for them inside there because they know they must pray. Until prayer becomes one of the work you are doing every day not every other day you know what is every other day every other day is if you do today you will not do tomorrow you will do next day no that, you are not yet praying excuse me prayer why is prayer so important i have to chop so many things i have to i have noticed that i can't handle it once yet so i have to chop so many things Amen. Just if you go through the scriptures, you see we are the Bible is talking about praying, 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 praying. But I will tell you major reason why people don't pray. Do you know major reason why people don't pray? Lack of Holy Spirit. When you don't have Holy Spirit, you cannot pray. Do you know why? It is Holy Spirit that puts hunger for prayer in a man. You know, for some time, we have passed some level in this church, level of uh, stop stealing, stop fornicating, stop gossiping. We have passed it. I've started for the first, la first year, my one year here, that has been my message. Now I am giving you solid food. That's why I started emphasizing on Holy Spirit during the Pentecost. A week before Pentecost, I started emphasizing on the ministry of Holy Spirit. You cannot pray. Oh, David said, Quicken me, O oh Lord, and I will call upon your name. You cannot pray unless Holy Ghost quickens you. Even if you go to pray on the flesh, on your own, you will not know what you are praying. The Bible says we know not what to pray. It is the Spirit that prays. Listen to me. If you are not yet baptized in the Holy Ghost, you have not started the journey of Christ, a Christian. You are not yet a Christian. Because there are so many things you cannot do. You cannot pray. You cannot read the Bible and understand. Then what kind of a Christian are you? I am born again. It's not enough. I am born again. It's just a gateway. You just, you just got admission. Eh? If you enter an institution, the first thing is to do what? To get admission. Two of us. After the admission, then lecture starts. Assignment starts. Quiz and test starts. Exam starts. Project starts. 
before you can be a graduate you are born again that is if you are if you are not born again sorry we have passed that level you have to come privately for such uh, summons again or you go and buy old messages that you are born again is but only admission it can make you a student it can make you a graduate if you want to be a graduate you have to start lectures you have to start writing your quiz you have to start writing exams you have to defend your project to be a graduate getting admission in the realm in the family of god is born again after that you need holy spirit because you cannot pray fervently you can only pray when you have a need i've told you a man a woman of prayer is somebody that has time when he prays every day if your work is so serious then you have to wake up at 4 a.m and pray one hour before time if you do it consistently that makes you a that means you have a prayer altar are we getting blessed this morning that, that, that shows you have a prayer altar if you don't have a prayer altar in this wicked world sorry sorry if it is only there are two kinds of prayer altar private altar and the corporate altar we are now at the corporate altar private altar is your secret place the secret place of god you are my shield you are my covering you are my stability my foundation take me to the place the place you are the secret place the eyes where i wanna be take me to the place the place you are the secret place the eyes where I wanna be the eyes where I wanna be let me show you what lack of prayer altar does the man and his family Ezekiel Ezekiel 32 Ezekiel 22 and the last two verses Ezekiel 22 and the last two verses Are we there? Okay, let me read from here That is 30 and 31 so I sought for a man among them who would make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it. But I found no one. Therefore I have poured out my indignation on them. I have consumed them with the fire of my rod and I have recompensed their deeds. On their own head says the Lord prayer is the only authorized channel that can bring God into your affairs that you are complaining God you are here this thing is happening to our family nobody's program that cannot bring God into your affairs do you know why God the Bible says heaven belongs to God and the earth he has given to man God cannot do anything on the earth without a man. Look at here. He says, yes, it's true they did evil. It's true your family did evil. It's true somebody provoked an altar and your family is suffering. God said, I was looking for a man in that family who has a prayer altar that he can invite me through his altar. But I did not see. 
Many families are still suffering poverty today. Do you know why? There is no prayer altar in that family. Why is it that any gear in your family must put to bed before he marries? She marries. Why is it that all your all your brothers, all your sons, they will rise and come down? There is another. If you know what it takes, this evil people to to maintain altars. Listen to me. Maintaining altar is difficult, especially the altar of prayer. Especially the altar of prayer. But it's a duty. I told you, if prayer is not yet a duty, that when you wake up, you are saying, I will go to nature. I will go to this place. I will pray. If prayer is not part of your itinerary every day, you don't have a prayer altar. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? You don't have a prayer altar. God said, when I saw the evil in your family, when I saw the wickedness going on in your family, I wanted to intervene, but I was looking for a man who can stand on the gap. I was looking for a man who can pray, who can invite me through his prayer altar so that I will stop the evil, but I didn't see. So, they are evil we come on their head. So when you are complaining that God left you, God didn't want to answer me. Have you prayed that you said two days to fast and pray and that is the end? Doesn't make you, doesn't mean you have a prayer altar. God can only come through your affairs through your prayer altar. And you are the altar. If not, do you know what God said? God said when Jesus was teaching them, the the Lord's prayer. One of them, he taught them, he said, if you want to see the kingdom of God, go and pray and say to him, thy kingdom come. If you don't pray like that, you cannot see his kingdom. If you don't invite his kingdom through your prayer altar, you cannot see the kingdom. If you want to see his kingdom, you have to begin to pray, thy kingdom You want to see the kingdom of God? You want to see the power of God? You have to authorize God. God cannot do anything on earth without authorization. Do you know that even when God wants to bring Jesus into the world, he needed human body. I've told you the spirit world can only manifest in this physical world through an altar or a human body. God needed a human body. What did he do? He sent angel Gabriel to go and negotiate with Mary. Had he been Mary refused, Jesus cannot come through Mary. Until Mary authorized God. The angel came to her and said, Hey, Mary, you are highly favored. Though. Hey, you are lucky. Mary, you are favored, highly favored. Mary said, What kind of greeting is this? What is it? He said, Ah, Mary, there is an agenda we have now. We need to, to bring a savior. Because before them, a, a woman called Anna and the man called Simeon have been praying that God will bring salvation. They were inviting God and God needed a virgin. They have to negotiate with Mary. And Mary said, okay, let it be to me according to your word. But how can it be possible? Said, no, what we needed is just your consent. Forget how it will happen. Once you give us your consent, Holy Ghost will overshadow you everything we was. Okay? That immediately Mary gives authorization. The angel moves straight to the husband. Say, ha, please, your wife will soon carry a baby. Don't push her away. This is this is this. Once he secured their consent, bam, God was authorized, and Jesus came. And Jesus came. Do you are you expecting God to intervene in your affair? Have you built a prayer altar that will authorize you? Spirit realm cannot operate in physical realm without invitation without authorization not even God this is a call to go and pray how many wicked daughters are working against you why is it delay in marriage everywhere in your family 
How many authors do you know that are speaking in this issue? Do you think there is not an author controlling issue? If you don't know, there is. Go to this year again, you see author. There is altar controlling issue. If you don't have your own altar of prayer, they will be praying in their altars. Their altars will control you. But when you have a strong altar of prayer, nobody's altar controls you. Why is there so much hardship in your family? God said, I am looking for a man. I cannot do it without a man. The day God wanted the dry bones to live, he took Ezekiel by the spirit of the dry bones valley and said, son of man, can these bones live? Ah, you have all power, you can do it because I can do it. If the bones will live, Ezekiel, you have to authorize us by telling the bones to live. God now told Ezekiel what to say. Immediately Ezekiel said it, the bones lived. Is there so much barrenness around you? Where is your prayer altar? Which altar is frustrating your marriage? Okay, your business suddenly starts going down. You are calling Buhari. Buhari's altar is still very far. There is an altar in that market. Sister, don't rejoice that you have secured a good job. You, you are not the CEO of that company. You don't know the author that controls that company. You don't know the author that controls the school where your children are going. Some of these private schools you see are established on demonic altars. When they see a bright student, they shine with the destiny of that student and, and we send them away useless after school. They have sapped every virtue they see. Why? There is no strong altar in the gear. Are you getting what I'm saying? Some of these hospitals you go, they take your blood for lab and all these things. Some of those people have serious altars. There are altars everywhere. That is why you must equip your own personal altar of prayer. Somebody, are you getting what I'm saying at all? Who is frustrating your life? What altar is frustrating your life? Are you going to cry this morning and say, God, through my altar of prayer, I authorize you. Come into the affairs of my family. I want to announce to you that the Lord put it in my heart. We are going to have one week midnight prayers. It will be starting 12 on the dot from this night to Saturday. If you like, come. If you like, stay at home. Sleep. I've told you, prayer is a sacrifice. If you don't pay the price, God will not come into your affairs. God, stop looking for a man of God that will lay hands on you. Impartation has little to do. You must dig your way. You know what God said? When God was establishing the altar, in, in the tabernacle, he said to them, Every the fire in the altar will never go out. The fire in the altar, we never do what some of us, your praying mother has died. Oh, <laughs> if that fire goes out, you are in trouble. My mom is still praying for me, but I pick my own personal altar, praying for my children too. God said to them, every morning you will go to that altar, remove all the ashes, add more firewood. <laughs> every morning you add what? Firewood. We are in your prayer altar. The ashes of yesterday cannot burn today. One week midnight prayer in this church. If you go now and start telling people, it starts today. Sorry, I'm not announcing it today. Oh, go see It starts this night. If you are serious to liberate your family, if you are serious that enough is enough, if you are serious, you want to see your children. Who told you your children are dons? 
let me announce to you again some of these places you are working is being controlled by serious altars when my wife was giving birth to I think our daughter I was opportunity to be in the teaching hospital she was in the world something just occurred to me hey, that is possible that blood sucking demons are in this teaching I was outside praying until she comes out some of those places uh, if you know where some of those blood are going but your safety is not in running away because if you're sick you must go to lab what is your safety that you yourself have also become an altar that when they take your blood to that altar even other prisoners in that altar we go free because altar has jam altar. Somebody is not following with me. Don't joke with this one week midnight. It has a lot to say about your future. It has a lot to say about your children. This midnight, one week midnight, we destroy so many altars. And make you a mobile altar. Anywhere you go, they will see fire. Because every morning you add fire. It is only a fly that is suffering from madness. We perch on a hot soup. Is it possible? You see a fly. Oh, you and you need to hear in a It's that time you set your life on fire. Ask God for the baptism of Holy Ghost. Because Holy Spirit still remains the source to pray. The Bible said it oh, we do not know what to pray. It is only the Spirit. In Zechariah 10 12, he says, I will pour upon them the spirit of prayer and supplication. The first prayer we are taking this morning, because our major prayer will start in the night. 12 on the dot, we will raise the first, we will raise the altar of worship from 12. Altar of worship will be going till 12 30. We switch to out of prayer. Maybe one hour, 30 minutes, two hours, depending. From today, this night, to Saturday night. Then on Sunday, we will come with sacrifice of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving of a living thing. Why coming next Sunday? Come with a living thing. You are not coming to perform. To thank God for destroying altars. Because altars will catch fire. This week, chains will be broken. This week's yoke will be shattered. Unless you counted yourself out in that prayer. We will pray. It will get to a point we pray family by family. Every family will go and hold hands. And I will be telling you what to pray. It's not like the other one you just pray. I will be directing you what to pray. Because enough is enough. It's only they only pay the price. Let me tell you something. You better pay the price of prayer. Do you know why? The price you are paying for not praying is higher than the price you will pay to pray. Did you get that? Eh? What you are paying because you are not praying is higher than what you will pay to pray. What do you need to pay to pray? One, give your life to Jesus. Two, be filled with Holy Ghost. Three, go to your time every day. Carve out at least one hour. For the start, pray one hour straight for the start. You can cut it 20 minutes, 20 minutes, 20 minutes. But know when to come and meet that 20 minutes. Jesus said, you must pray for me at least one hour. Can't you wash with me one hour? I'll be able to pray one hour stretch, okay. 20 minutes 
and in the afternoon i will take another 20 minutes in the night you can start like that but make sure you are adding firewood in your altar every morning is somebody with me are you with me so this night i was still announce it in neighbor service this night this night midnight there was a time i said i will face midnight prayer but because it did not come i didn't face it i'm facing it already from this night it's not what you will come late take it serious before 12 sacrifice sleep this one week even if rain is falling take umbrella let god see you walking inside the rain it's part of the sacrifice for prayers don't say rain is too much god is too much they are part of sacrifice those who are tying your business those who are controlling your destiny are paying things that are more the bible said they do not sleep they do not slumber those that make men to fall sacrifice sleep hey, i will go to work sacrifice sleep if you come and pray 12 to 2 even if 12 to 3 go to work and sleep let them know that this week battle for destiny pray for your children pray for your brother there is a level of altar you will raise your brother they held in abroad will be released the bible says the day god destroyed sodom and gomorrah he remember remembered abraham and he delivered lord lord didn't pray but abraham prayed am i talking to somebody you will see many of us who will give excuse for this midnight prayer this one is not bring money this one is come and pray i will not pray that rain will not fall anytime rain wants to fall let it fall Walking on that rain to come and pray is the sacrifice God is looking for. Tell sleep, wait. You have slept enough. What did you gain after sleeping? In this generation, you are still, you, you are still snoring through the night. Are you ready to pray? We are going to take some prayers this morning. So get ready for this night. It starts this night. That was the way God gave me the instruction. It was written here. Sir. Okay, let me read the instruction the way it came. Okay, midnight prayer. We start today, 12 p.m. Okay, our morning prayers will be worship. But we take note. Because of the midnight prayer, we come in the morning, our normal time. Party. Those who we stay through, we stay. If you cannot stay after the prayer, if you can go back, you are free to go. But as many that can stay in the morning, we do one hour worship. So we'll be dismissing six thirty. Six thirty. One hour worship. Five thirty to six thirty. We go. Next Sunday is a service of thanksgiving with a living thing. There is an instruction. I wrote all of them down. Next Sunday, after the midnight prayer. Find something heavy that is living. Will you bury you? See she neke neke ne. Ndi je chua je chikwani he den duje. Ebe 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 ya chulu a je particular place. That place a blood. Some of us will not. We be afraid to pass abuze no abu abuze no. So we be afraid to pass this in the midnight. Do you know why they are afraid? Because many sacrifices are going on there. So na ga neba na chusa cha. I invite good demons and we potter. Don't joke with these midnight prayers. Amen. Okay. Let's take maybe five, ten minutes to pray. We know how to rush that is. The first prayer, everybody should kneel down. I will tell you why. Before fire we come. One, there will be an altar. Two, there will be a sacrifice on that altar. When Elijah wanted to bring down fire, the day he met with the, the prophets of Baal, the first thing he did was to repair the altar. 
Are you hearing me? He first of all repaired the altar. You are that altar. Repair your life so that you can face the prayer of this week, this midnight. One week midnight prayer. 12 a.m. 12 midnight every day till Saturday. Now repair your altar. David said, if I regard iniquity in me, God will not hear me. If you have not forgiven anybody, forgive that person now. Plead the blood of Jesus over your altar. You are the God is waiting for you to intervene for your family. Your children have suffered enough. Your brothers have suffered enough. Your prayer can turn things around in your family. God is waiting for you. Repair your altar. Repair your altar. Now, place blood on that altar for fire to come. The blood of Jesus. Place the blood of Jesus on your body. You are the sacrifice. The Bible says, present your body as a living sacrifice. Present the blood of Jesus upon the sacrifice, upon your life. After repairing your body, ask God to forgive, to cleanse, to wipe away your sins. If you are not yet born again, use this opportunity and say, Jesus, come into my life. Uh -uh. Nobody should beg you again to be born again. If you are not yet born again, just pray quickly and say, Jesus, I need you in my life. Jesus, please come. Forgive me my sin. I accept your gift of salvation. I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. Place the blood of Jesus over your life. After that, you stand up. We pray in the next five minutes. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. Sing it now, louder. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is Stand to your feet now. Lift up your two hands and sing it. In the name of Jesus. To break every chain. Break every chain. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Lift your voice and say, Oh God, my Father. I'm not hearing your voice. Oh God, my Father. This morning, I stand as an altar on behalf of my life, on behalf of my family. I authorize you. I invite you. Intervene in our family. Open your mouth and fire prayer. Authorize God into your family. Authorize God into your affairs. Authorize God over your children. Maziko to brekete brahala. Nesu bari kande rekosh. Ikala gada basinto rekete bra. E dege 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 de bari kete basa kontoria. Mazu dugu du bari koto shebra. Ne kete bari kusumbre dege de. Leka tabasha kotos. I authorize you. I authorize you, Father. I authorize you to intervene, to come down into my affairs, into the affairs of my family, into the affairs of my business. Somebody go ahead and authorize God. Ask God to come. Lift your voice and pray. It's not a prayer you pray in your spirit. Pray it out. Pray it out. Shout the prayer. La handa gada masha braha le godo sabra dege de baha ne kande reba supra kanto she enterege de. I authorize you, Father. I authorize you. I authorize you. I authorize you. You must authorize God before He will intervene. It's not what you say in your heart. It's not what you say in your heart. It's what you pray out. There is power 
In the name of Jesus, there is power. In the name of Jesus, to break every chain, 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 break every chain. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can you hold somebody? Hold somebody. Look at that person. Say to him, my sister or my brother. This morning, every altar speaking against your destiny. Speaking against your family. Shall be silenced by the power of the blood. There is power, power, wonder walking power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder walking power in the precious blood. Oh, the Lord. Lift your voice and say, Oh God, my Father, I invoke the blood of Jesus over this life, over his destiny, over her family. I decree every altar speaking against their family, speaking against their destiny, be silenced by the blood of Jesus. Open your mouth and fire prayer. Every altar speaking. <laughs> Break We silence every altar By the blood of you In the name of Jesus Christ We take one more prayer I will see you by 12 midnight One week midnight prayer Starting from this night if you know anybody passing challenges of life good thing you would do for that person is to bring him who told you your womb is not good what happened to your womb when god created you the bible said god look at you and say what i have created is what is good anything that is bad jesus said an enemy has done that do you remember in the scripture he said a man planted good seed and they went there and planted wheat and they came to him and said, Hey, did you plant wheat in your farm? He said, An enemy has done that. Excuse me. When things are not good, don't think there, there's nothing like coincidence. What do you mean that everybody in that family, they, 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 they don't marry early? Even those that are married, they have problems with their husband. Some don't take in. What do you mean that, uh, uh, What do you mean It's not a coincidence. If you love yourself, be here for this midnight prayer. Put your two hands on your head. There's a very powerful prayer we pray as we run off. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, as many that are baptized in the Holy Ghost, speak in tongues for one week before we continue. Just for one minute, go ahead and speak in tongues. Lift your voice and speak in tongues. Don't pray in your heart. Makala hanto koshapranda gedeli kanto subrade. Nehenda la gade gede basen tubala hale ketush. Le sheshe para katosh imprededa 
Le babareko suprata. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your voice and say, My father, my father. Every legal access I have given to wicked altars, wicked spirits inside my life, inside my family. Look at me. Do you know what is legal access? Some of us, the day you committed fornication was the day that demon has legal access to come in. So, O Jekwo, man of God, I need me a deliverance here. I cast you out and say, what do you mean? I was officially invited to this life. I can't go. You know, demons have the, know their rights. Do you know? Unless there is intervention of the blood. Because when the blood of Jesus comes, even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Some of us, the day you visit Nathan Doctor, maybe when you were starting business new, that was the day you gave demon legal access. But this, this morning, that legal door must be closed. Lift your voice and say again, my father, my father, every legal access I have given to demons and altars over my life and destiny, over my family, this morning, as I invoke the blood of Jesus, I cast them away and I close that door. Close it by the blood of Jesus. Go ahead and close it. Go ahead and close it. Maybe you must say it is Zuli Femado. If when someone says to him, "I have given you food." He can answer for you for from an image post. Obliya madam trust on a kagi izuliye imepe uzo ihe ganef. Close that door by the mercy of the blood of Jesus. Hope you blessed with this message. To watch other numerous messages by Reverend Canon Prince Chukuma, subscribe to our YouTube channel username. Reverend Prince Chukuma to watch our live streaming programs like our Facebook page username Prince Chukuma for more information prayers and counseling please call 0803-951-2515 0803-951-2515